Hello, everyone. Again, this is Justin Wingett from TM Television, your avid reseller here in the DFW area. It's time for another What's New in Media Composer video. Avid recently released Media Composer 8.10, and it has some pretty cool new features. I want to go over just a few of them with you today, and I'll be coming back soon also with a, a tips and trick video to maybe accompany this, so be on the lookout for that as well. What's interesting about this new release is the new features list isn't actually all that long, but some of the changes are pretty huge. We'll discuss a few of those, but mostly focus on some of my favorites as usual. I'm not going to go down this entire list and explain everything. So let's jump in and talk about some of those new features. The first thing on the list I want to mention is really not something I can necessarily show you because I don't have one here in the shop, but what's cool about the new version of Media Composer is that it is now supports the DNX IV, the Avid Artist DNX IV. So this is basically your Thunderbolt 3 USB-C enabled Artist IO interface. And you can see from the pretty picture here that it's got some ins and outs, SDI, HDMI, and all kinds of good stuff. So that's the new IO hardware that Avid has now introduced. There is a new version called the DNX IP, which should be coming out soon. So check out their Avid's website for more information on that. But that's kind of first on the list. Thought that was pretty cool, but Let's get that out of the way and let's move on into Media Composer itself. Okay, so first things first. Two big changes here in the select project window that they've introduced in this version. Number one is the ability to log into the Media Central server directly here from the select project window. I'm not connected to a Media Central at all, so I'm just going to kind of skip that. But if you launch this new version and you see this little text fields down here, that's why. It's basically giving you a direct login to your Avid Media Central server. The other new thing that they've added into this version are 8K presets. So when creating new projects, it's for a while now, uh, for several versions, you've been able to create custom raster dimensions up to and including 8K. But in this version, they've actually introduced 8K presets based on, of course, frame rate uh, and whether it's the full... 8K or the 8K UHD, so they are slightly different raster sizes. So that's kind of a cool new feature they've added there when you create your new project. But I'm not going to create an 8K project. I'm actually going to go into my what's new project here. The first thing I really want to jump into here within the actual interface is a functionality that's been added. They've been working on it for several releases, but they finally brought it to complete fruition. And what I'm talking about is syncing based on waveform analysis. So in previous versions, they introduced the ability to create group clips based on syncing waveform analysis, but now they've allowed you to do basic sync audio and video clips. In other words, they don't have to be group clips to be able to use this functionality. It is super simple how it works, and I'll show you right now. So the idea is that you need to have video and audio that both have a recorded track on them that can be analyzed. In other words, what I've done here is I've got a recording from my uh, camera on my computer and I clapped to give me like a sync point you know just for reference uh, so I've also got an audio clip that I recorded on my phone uh, of the same basically the same session so I know if I toggle source record in my timeline I can see the same place where I clapped and everything like that so in days gone by you would have to either use auxiliary time code which is always nice of course but if you don't have uh, sync slates and all that, you would have to mark your endpoint on your clap on the audio and mark your endpoint on the clap in the video and then do your syncing uh, that way. So auto sync based on endpoints. Well, now we don't need endpoints. We can use waveform analysis. So again, when I went in to sync my clip, I just selected them both together, right click on them, select auto sync, and now I can choose waveform analysis. And of course, within the sync selection menu, you, you may recall that you can choose to keep the audio on, on the video clip or remove it all together. I'm going to basically replace, I'm going to leave it default and replace the, the audio on the video with my uh, sound sync recording, basically. So when I click OK, it does the analysis, creates my sync clip, and now... And it's in sync. And all I had to do was just select them together in the bin, choose auto sync, and choose waveform analysis. So that is such a great, great feature uh, that they finally added. Uh, that's something that I applauded when I read that it was finally being released. So hopefully you'll be as excited as I am.
The next thing I want to look at is something that I kind of feel like a bit of a broken record here, but the last few releases of Media Composer, they've made a lot of enhancements to the audio mixer tool, and this release, they sort of are, are kind of ramping it up a little bit. And really what they're doing is they're it's all about making it easier to gang different tracks and manipulate different tracks and tabbing through your audio mixer tool. So let me just demonstrate. Notice on A3 and A4, I have some music tracks. It's actually just left and right stereo of, of the same song. And in days gone by, if I wanted to gang these two tracks together to lower their volume uh, together, obviously they probably need to be, I would have to click the group buttons, which would then group them, and then now I'm good to go. That can be kind of tricky, especially if you want to group multiple tracks together. So what they've done is in the side, the track panel here, I can now do something as, as easy as this. If I want to group A3 and A4 together, I simply select them here, right click, and now I can choose to gang selected or ungang selected. And then the moment I do that, you see the gang lights or the group lights light up. And so it makes the work a little bit easier. And now it's a simple right click option to ungang the tracks as well. Nice little change. I think that might save us a few seconds here and there as we're working. On a side note, on my previous What's New video, someone asked me about why my waveforms are white on those audio tracks. And I wasn't actually sure of the correct answer, but now I am after looking at my project here. The reason why my waveforms are different color is because the waveform that's in white, it means that that audio clip is a different sample rate than the project sample rate. In other words, if I look at this song in my bin, I'll see that it is a 44-1 sample rate, but if I look at my audio that I use for my sound syncing, that is a 48 sample rate, uh, and that's based on the project. So depending on what the project is, any sample rate that's different than the project sample rate will show up as a different color waveform. So there's the answer to that, mystery solved. The other big change in the audio mixer now is the tab key and you'll notice as I hit the tab key, the different value areas are highlighting for the level and the pan. Uh, so now, and that didn't used to do that. So now you're able to tab through these. And so I don't need to use my mouse at all. In other words, if I need to change my uh, left and right pan on this, I can just say minus 100, tab over to the next one and just do 100. And that's gonna pan. So in other words, I don't have to use my mouse tab is going to get me through that audio mixer much more quickly and efficiently as I'm trying to make those small adjustments. And finally, I present to you my favorite new feature in this release of Media Composer, and it is something that I think I've been dreaming about in my subconscious over the years, and it's finally come true. What I'm talking about is the fact that the reverse motion time warp effect is now, get this, real time. In other words, I can drag a reverse motion effect and I do not have to render. Hallelujah. That's cool. That in and of itself is worth the price of admission, I believe, because I'm telling you what, I've used reverse motion many, 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 many times and having to render those things just to make sure your shot works uh, is such a pain. So this is such a great, huge improvement. And they've been working on this over the last few releases of making as many effects as possible real time and, they, and they're finally getting there. So this is a huge, huge deal. That may not be a whole lot of stuff to cover, but I hope you enjoyed this video and find some of these new features interesting. As always, thanks for watching. This has been Justin Wingate with TM Television. We'll talk to you soon.